I've uh, been in paint my entire life, essentially. I started at Sherwin Williams in high school and, uh, you know, various uh, positions with them, got into management at one of the stores and uh, then jumped onto the other side of the counter early on and uh, sold resinous flooring. Uh, went to work for PPG, who we, uh, is one of our suppliers currently. Um, and that's how I got to know uh, utility service and maintenance is that I became their sales rep and sold them the materials that we're talking about today. Um, and then uh, over a little bit of time, they, you know, we built such a relationship uh, they decided to go into their succession planning mode and thankfully thought of me to uh, to be that guy. So uh, came over in 2015 and uh, been here ever since. It's been fantastic. Now there's uh, five, I'd say, is probably a, a good number. You know, we, we're unique in that we do both towers and substations. There's competitors of ours that do mainly towers and dabble in substations, we kind of keep a, a healthy mix of the two. The first step is to realize you have a problem and to put a program in place. We're still finding that on the substation side in particular that there's not really a planning phase to this at the moment. As a, a general rule, I think getting them to understand that there's the need is there this is not going away, and the, the cost of you know, maintaining these things is far more advantageous than a replacement cost. The transformers are millions of dollars. They're also, uh, you know, you, you probably can't open a newspaper without hearing about supply issues, so they're you know, 10 to 12 months out getting them. So it's kind of in their face as you know, a maintenance plan is the way to go forward. First of all, the guys that are currently doing it and are working with us to do it, we're kind of arm in arm, lockstep, going and just single-handedly looking at substations, taking an analysis of the current conditions and coming up with a, a one, five, 10 year plan. You know, if we're the ones that are out there trying to drive this demand, and we certainly are, we need to do a better job of how do we speak to guys we don't, aren't comfortable speaking to, meaning uh, I'm not a, finance guy. I'm not a chief financial officer. But I need to know that language in order to help convince a, a guy who has to sign off on stuff like that. Where this conversation comes up, I'm like, well, have we invited them to the party? Because we're always talking to the guys that we go to for our, you know, our milk run jobs. And, and we pound this concept to them and they all get it. They're like, yeah, sure. That sounds great. But we're not inviting the right people to this discussion to figure out how do we propose this language. You know, how, if this were to be a, uh, a possibility and you're a CFO, what are you looking to see from somebody like myself? You know, what are these triggers that are going to help get this uh, thing some momentum? Another approach is to, you know, once we uh, start getting some traction, get a feel for uh, what this language needs to look like. Then you uh, arm the guy from within and he can take it and look like the hero. So then you're, you've done two things there. You've gotten the point across to a guy, to the CFO, but you've also made a guy look like, like he knows what he's doing and he's helping the, helping the bigger picture. You, you create a, a, a loyalty there with somebody that uh, you, you know, potentially would get a lot of work from. I mean, that's, that's the goal. We'll get into an area and go and kind of highlight uh, how poor transformers are taken care of in a lot of areas. And uh, it, one success story, let me, uh, it's, it's not necessarily what we did, but it, it's been a template that's working, is that uh, some uh, utilities have to try to get rate increases. And uh, one uh, utility in particular uh, decided to do an audit on what their equipment looks like and how well they're taking care of it. And the, in, in order for them to justify getting the rate increase, they had to allot for the maintenance of this, uh, of their entire uh, system. 
to, you know, because ultimately the rate payer is the one that feels the pain and is the one relying on you providing a reliable service. So if you're not maintaining your equipment, how can we justify getting you this rate increase you're looking for? So it, it's worked out nice for us from, uh, uh, we've had a, maybe two, uh, two, maybe three guys that uh, are utilities rather that have gone through that process. It's been very helpful. Um, so it's not, not necessarily us going out scouring substation by substation. It's more of a, a higher level uh, approach. The audit's uh, something that's come down from the utility commission that says that, you know, if you think you can make the case to, you know, increase your rate to these people, you have to show that because of that, they're getting this in return. They're getting a reliable system that we're taking very good care of. It's just being a good steward of the ratepayers' money, and and it should be within your right to drive by a substation that is just terrible looking and complain. You say, "Look, we pay this money." A, it's an eyesore. I mean, you can be in some fairly affluent areas and have this rusty transformer in there that some people just don't want to look at. I mean, it's just cosmetically, but if you look at it as uh, you know reliability. You sh it's well within your right to say something to the utility. No, it can. It can. Um, because, you, like we were saying before, you can't just plug and play some of these folks into these positions to do the, to do the work. Uh, Tower's got its own very risky challenges as well, obviously, but um, from a substation standpoint, the the bar the the barrier to entry is quite a bit higher um we can always find guys uh to climb towers but then you run into well they get up 10 15 feet and panic and that's you know they're gone it's a legitimate fear i think the the fear from this ruling if it were to take off like that would be that it just swarms the uh, uh the market There'll be a lot of uh, upstart potentially, you know, new companies coming out trying to help fill the void, which I don't like, and because not just because it's you know they would be playing in our sandbox, but that they go in unexperienced or inexperienced and and make a mistake and kind of ruin the whole thing for everybody that's doing it by the book and doing it correctly. I would like to see a just a slow increase in tide that, that just seems more manageable i think the utilities would get more out of that if it was just kind of slow walked into a, an advanced pace and in any any industry you don't want uh, people coming in and putting shoddy work into the market space and making everybody look bad because you know oh, this this program was a bust you know because there's still guys that are in that category of we would better we would be better off letting it rust to the ground and building a new one than doing what you're talking about and flooding the market and having people uh, come in and do shoddy work would would hurt our our case big time uh, I would speak to the FERC ruling for sure I, I think that's a very important piece um, but it's still going to come down to their comfort level so you, you, know, you gotta temper it but if I'm sitting across from them I mean we're talking about you know we're talking about uh, maintenance cost and I, you gotta be leery of using the word maintenance right now we've uh, been using LinkedIn quite a bit believe it or not uh, I know that's I, I get uh, feedback that that's kind of a uh, that the star is kind of dimming on them but it's been working for us fairly well. Uh, and then feet on the ground, man. It's uh, just getting out and, and calling these people. We all know where they're at. We know getting the contact names, obviously, is a trick, but we're, we're, we do a lot of grassroots type stuff. Uh, we do the website and, and things like that, but that's just more of a, a landing space for everybody. Um, but LinkedIn's been working very well. We're, we don't dabble too much into social media that much other than that. Um, I think we could and potentially should, but it's really not in our lane yet. You know, we don't want to, kind of like I was saying earlier, we don't want to jump into a space that we're not good at and 
you can you can do more harm than good, honestly. Recruiting, uh, we found a lot of uh, discussion groups, Facebook groups, things like that. We we found some uh, some boards that have produced some pretty good guys. We lean on a uh, um, temporary services, you know, uh, labor guys every now and then, and we try to try to keep that at bay a little bit too if we can. But there, if you have an immediate need, they they can help you out with that marketing or uh, recruiting side of things. We're IBW union. Uh, I know some competitors of ours are painters unions, and I know they get good training and safety training from there. Uh, we like, I think our focus, our heavier focus on substations really drives the IBW um, side of our biz, our, you know, uh, angle, I should say. Uh, and they provide a lot of training for guys, site specific, safety awareness. Uh, towers, we go through all the, the typical climbing training that everybody else goes through. And yeah, these are all monitored on a, a yearly basis, typically. On the job training, we, we have to have to show them what to do once they get there. You know, you can, you can put on a harness all day, but the job is actually recoding these things. So we, we do a lot of training it's daily. Since uh, 1948, it speaks to the market space. Honestly, you know, it's uh, uh, it's one of those things that uh, doesn't seem like it's going to go away. It's fairly recession-proof. You can see that it's really just now starting to get on an upward trajectory. We've navigated the waters all this time. We've finally got some interest uh, in doing these more larger scale type uh, programs with these folks. So it, it speaks to the market space and the demand and need. And uh, it, we're very fortunate to have been around as long as we have. And, and uh, it speaks to our people as well. Yeah, we, we absolutely look at that. The problem is, is that uh, the there's a lot more folks out there to, to grapple with that have been doing it all this time. We could go out and, and bid commercial buildings, but there's people that do that day in and day out. We wouldn't be able to compete. That's kind of where, that's why we kind of stay in our lane in, in that regard. Uh, we're always looking to bolt on uh, other services to, pri to provide to the same industry, which, I mean, we do. We, like I was saying earlier, we clean, you're familiar with the insulators on the end of those lines. We clean and coat those to prevent uh, flashovers. Um, so in drone inspections, we're dabbling in that to give these guys an assessment of where they're at. That's, that's another thing that's on the uh, on this uh, CapEx thing is that's part of the, the, one of the beginning stages of getting a plan together is to see where you're at. We're always looking for that type of thing. Dabbling outside of the T&D markets, probably a little uncomfortable for us. There's a lot more competition out there.